Hey guys, yeah, I just wanted to give you my uh, thoughts on the news that dropped uh, two days ago about the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh, Kazuka Takahashi, um, being uh, dead at the age of 60. Now, this is from the, what I'm reading from here, it's from, a July, it's from the July 8th um, uh, article by the USA Today. And this is what they said, and I quote, Kazuka Takahashi, the creator of the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga comic and trading card game, has died, apparently while snorkeling in southwestern Japan. That was according to a Coast Guard on Friday. The, the report says the body of Takahashi, age 60, was found Wednesday floating. Okay, it was Wednesday. He didn't die Friday, but he died Wednesday. Was found float was found Wednesday, floating about 300 meters, uh, 330 yards off the coast of Okinawa, Okinawa, by a person running a marine leisure business, according to an official at the Naha Coast Guard uh, Naago uh, Station, Na Naago Station. The Coast Guard and the fire department went by boat and watercraft and found the body face down and wearing a snorkel mask. He may have been dead for a day or two, according to the Coast Guard official, who spoke on condition of anonymity because or anatomy, or anonymity, or whatever it's called, anonymity, because the job did not allow them to be quoted by a name, or basically anonymously. Yeah, anonymously. Uh, the body showed signs of being attacked by a marine creature, possible sharks, but the cause of death was still in the investigation. Uh, Takahashi was identified after police in other parts of, uh, in another part of uh, 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 Okinawa contacted. Okay, let me reread that again. It says Takahashi was identified after police in another part of Okinawa contacted the Coast Guard Thursday saying a rented car had been found abandoned on a beach. The car had a driver's license confirming the identity. Uh, Takahashi's f real first name was Kazu, uh, Kazu, that's K-A-Z-U-Z-O, Kazu. His family was contacted and identified, oh, his family was contacted and identified him, the Coast Guard official said. Yu-Gi-Oh! debuting in Shonen Jump magazine in 1996 became a hit selling more than 400 million copies as manga through the number of cards out in the world. Though, although, although, let me reread that. Yu-Gi-Oh! debuting in Shonen Jump magazine in 1996 became a hit selling more than 400 million copies as manga, uh, as a manga, although the number of cards out in the world is far greater in the billions. The official card game went on sale in 1999. A TV show and video games, as well as figures and toys, were also part of the franchise. There was an outpouring of mourning on social media. Eric Stewart, the American voice actor who did the animation voiceover, said he was saddened by the news. He said, and I quote, this is uh, Stewart, an, amazing ta an amazingly talented man since they created a role that would help define my voice acting career. Uh, Stewart said on Twitter, using the Japanese word for teacher, sensei being teacher. Fans around the world posted their cards and manga images online. Some noted that was how they had become interested in Japan. People recalled how the cards helped them make their first friends. Um, Let's see, one London-based Yu-Gi-Oh! news account said on Twitter and its official site, We are deeply grateful for the wonderful Yu-Gi-Oh! universe that he created, or he has created, and our thoughts are with his family and friends at this difficult time. The ambassador to Japan from Georgia, uh, Tisimuza, uh, uh, Tiamaza, the, va the, hava, the Hava, said Yu-Gi-Oh! invoked a distinct world. And of course, they have a, a thing up here that says, "In memory of Mr. Kazuka uh, Takahashi." Uh, Kazuka, Ka, Mr. Kazuka Takahashi, which states, and this is from the Konami uh, Yu-Gi-Oh trading card site, 
We are shocked and saddened to hear the sudden passing of Mr. Kazuka, Kazuki, Kazuki Takahashi. We are deeply grateful for the wonderful world. world uh, we are deeply grateful for the wonderful Yu-Gi-Oh universe that he has created, and our thoughts are with his friends and family at this difficult time. Together with his countless fans, we pledge to carry on the Yu-Gi-Oh legacy with all the love and care it deserves. Um, he continues on. On by saying, I will never forget the excitement of playing the game, he said on his official Japanese Twitter. Takahashi's work had children and the young at heart collecting cards decorated with mechanical monsters and wizard-like creatures with a frenzy. The price of some shot up during the height of the fad. When a Yu-Gi-Oh! event was held at a Tokyo baseball stadium in 1999, so many children and parents came out or came to buy the cards Game maker Konami, the organizer, had to call it uh, had to call in riot police. Yeah, let me read, read let me reread that again. Let me get some coffee too. Hold on for a sec. Okay, let me reread that again. It says, and I quote: When a Yu-Gi-Oh event was held at a Tokyo baseball stadium in 1999, so many children and parents came to buy the cards. Game maker Konami, the organizer, had to call in riot police. Yeah, that's how popular it's been. Yu-Gi-Oh! is played by having two people facing off and placing cards from the deck with different powers to try to defeat the other. Each player starts out with 8,000 life points, or 4,000 depending on how you look at it, which get chiseled away at your cards as your cards lose. The main character is a doe-eyed boy with a spiky blonde hair called Yugi Moto, an expert at games. Yu-Gi-Oh! means King of Games. The most expensive cards, the ones literally with glitter, are powerful in the game, called Super Rare and Secret Rare. But they weren't that easily found, so people bought packs or cartons of the cards. The success of Yu-Gi-Oh! in the West was similar to that of other Japanese animation and games like Pokemon. And that's about it for the article, but yeah. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, we, unfortunately, yeah, the, the guy that was behind Yu-Gi-Oh, um, yeah, passing away at age 60 from apparently drowning um, or something uh, while snorkeling and then being attacked by sea creatures like sharks or something, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it's hard to, to imagine it's hard to imagine, you know, you know, such a way to go and everything, a tragic way to go. But yeah, Takahashi, Takahashi, Kazuka, Kazuka, Takahashi, he he gave us basically a great. Uh, you know, what is it, Kazuka, Kazuka, Takahashi? Yeah, he gave us a great uh, game. Aim and series uh, when he was alive, and I'll tell you honestly. I'll tell you honestly. Um, I was never really much into Pokemon or anything when it became a craze. You know, I could understand that it became a craze with the with the younger kids and all that. So that that's understandable. I get that. You know. Um, you know, I, I get that. So, anyway, um, what was it? Oh, yeah. Anyway, though, like I said, he, you know, I've, I've never, well, I was never really a fan of Pokemon when it came out because I could see who it was targeted at. I mean, I could respect it and it had some good episodes during its first run. And, you know, I did see the movie, the first movie, and I thought it was all right. But, you know, Besides that, I just never really got into it. I mean, I like I said, I watched some episodes, I watched the first movie, but again, I just never got into it that much because it was always like a rinse and repeat cycle in the episodes and even with some of the movies. You know, there was always like a rinse and repeat situation with the characters. Like, Ash, you know, gets turned into stone temporarily, basically killed temporarily uh, towards the end of the movie and then restored. Um couple of I don't know how many movies later him and his friends along with Team Rocket get absorbed into these little blobby balls 
all is basically killed, if you will, and basically uh, and basically sent to travel to the center of some kind of tree to, I guess, give it life or something like that. It'll become part of its life energy, you know, only to be restored later on after after Meowth and the other Pokemon convince that tree, hey, these these aren't threats. These people aren't threats. They're friends or something like that. So even though I did watch a few episodes here and there, and like I said, watch the movie and stuff, I just never really could get into it. But just like I was able to get into Digimon a little bit more because you can see it was aimed at an older audience, the same could be said with Yu-Gi-Oh, if not more so. Because when I got into Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, at first I was thinking, okay, what's this craze that people are talking about? What's this Yu-Gi-Oh craze? And the moment I saw the, the show, the anime, and the moment I started seeing people my age starting to collect the cards and stuff, I was like, okay, there's something to this. Because here's the thing, I, don't, I never saw people my age collecting Pokemon cards as much, you know, as maybe what they're doing now for collector's sake. You know, some might say, oh, they're just collecting the Pokemon cards for the kids. That might be true too. I can't, I can't say yay or nay, or, you know, on either scenario, but still, but still, um, the thing is, back in the early 2000s, I never saw many people my age, or even at the age that's buying the Pokemon cards, or, well, basically what I'm trying to say is, all right, let me run. All right, sorry about that. But like I said, I never really saw people my age collecting the Pokemon cards more than, you know, they were collecting Yu-Gi-Oh! Because what they were doing was buying Yu-Gi-Oh! more so than Pokemon. Yeah! They were buying Yu-Gi-Oh! more so than Pokemon. And that's a fact. That's an absolute fact. So for me to see people my age buying Yu-Gi-Oh! I knew, hey, there's got to be something to it. So I watched the anime, because I think they told me about the anime, I watched it. And I was like, oh, this is pretty good. This is actually pretty good. You know, and I got into it and I kept watching it season after season, you know, year after year because it was good. It, it, got, it grabbed my attention. It grabbed my attention more so than I think Pokemon would. You know, it grabbed my attention very similar to how Digimon did. Because again, you could tell that they were aiming towards an older, older audience and uh, the basically uh, the coin of fright to basically repeat myself I should say not coin of phrase but to repeat myself uh, you can tell that they were, they were aiming at a older audience and and to find out later on that when it was originally aired in Japan months prior to us getting the episodes here in the states to find out that the episodes were uncensored in Japan, basically more violent and dark and grim. It was, you could, again, you could tell that they were aiming at an older audience with Yu-Gi-Oh! And I think that's what everybody my age at the time in the early 2000s noticed. You know, even though with four kids and WB and Foxbox and all them, you know, even though they would basically, um, you know, basically uh, tone things down with certain animes they would bring over, you could tell that some of the animes that they would tone down originally were meant for an older audience. I mean, let's not forget, they brought over One Piece and tried to censor it, dub it down, but it was, they were unsuccessful because everybody, and I think even those at the networks, could see that One Piece was meant for an older audience. They, I think they even did this, I think, with a show similar to Evangelican, similar to Evangelican. It wasn't Evangelican, but it was a different name, where they tried to tone it down, but everybody could see, and again, I think the same with the networks, they could see it was aimed at an older audience uh, when it was originally aired in Japan. And the same could be said for Yu-Gi-Oh! Everybody could see it was aimed at an older audience just by its presentation. And that's what got me into it so much because I was like, damn, this show is good. This show is good. It's dark. 
and everything, you know, even when it toned down a little bit, it was good, it was dark. You know, it was just like, you did not see many shows, you know, anime-wise, you know, based on a manga, based on a card game, that went that far, even with a censored version. And what's interesting about Yu-Gi-Oh! is the fact, and I'm sure uh, Takahashi was aware of this, because I'm sure he approved of it. What was interesting about Yu-Gi-Oh! is that, you know, the anime became so popular here in, here in the U.S. that with people finding out, and again, you have to remember, this is during the early days of the, of the internet coming into its own. You know, of Internet Explorer coming into its own, Firefox coming into its own, you know, other browsers, you know, popping up to serve as alternatives uh, to those main browsers. You know, Google Chrome and Edge weren't even a thing just yet. They were probably in development, but they weren't a thing just yet. But the point I'm getting at, but the point I'm getting at is people would go onto the Internet and they would find out and see that the episodes they were watching of Yu-Gi-Oh! here in the U.S. when they were in Japan were uncensored. And the mangas they would read of Yu-Gi-Oh! show that, yeah, it's not meant for young kids. It's meant for an older audience. So, like I said, Takahashi obviously knew about this and, and basically approved uh, for, I think, what was it, Four Kids Home Entertainment, who were distributing the DVDs at the time and the VHSs? Because, yes, Yu-Gi-Oh! was on VHS for a time. You know, he gave the okay for them to distribute, you know, the uncut versions of the episodes with the same voice cast from the, dub the same English dubbed voice cast of the original censored versions. So, yeah, you had Eric Stewart, you had Dan Green, two prominent voice actors in the show, coming back over along with the other voice actors and actresses to re-record the episodes, but re-record them as they were originally meant to be recorded and heard, as if they were meant for prime time, if you catch my drift. But, yeah, but, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh!, but yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! became such a phenomenon that for a brief period, they released, and again, I'm sure Takahashi was okay, had to approve this, they released, you know, the, in, you know, the first, almost, I wouldn't say the entire first season, but a selective amount of episodes of the first season, uh, they re-released them uncut, as if they were, you know, originally, as, as if, you know, as they were first seen, I should say, in Japan, but now, with the original English voice cast coming back to re-record the episodes, you know, but re-recording them with the script, you know, translated from Japanese to English, which I thought was pretty cool. Now, being a fan or becoming a fan, of course, I got into the card game, and I'm still into it to this day. In fact, one of the cards that I look at is probably, you know, because one of the things a lot of people take from the Yu-Gi-Oh! series you know, and they take it into real life as well, is they always have that prominent card they look at as their ace, as their premier card, as the first powerful card they've had. You know, with Yugi, it's Dark Magician. With Joey, it's Red Eyes Black Dragon. With Kaiba, it's Red Eyes, it's Blue Eyes White Dragon, I should say. You know, stuff like that. With Taya, you could say to an extent it's Dark Magician Girl. And like I said, a lot of fans, young and old, took that same mindset, you know, along with them that watched the show, read the manga, collected the cards. They took that same mindset whenever they started collecting, or first, yeah, whenever they started first collecting, and they would look at one, probably one of the first packs, and if one of the first packs had a powerful card, they would look at that card as their ace. And for me, that card was Wing Weaver. That's right. Wing Weaver was my first powerful card at 2,500 life points. Or 2,500 attack points, I should say. 
That was my first big card. And then over time, of course, I did get all the established cards over time. You know, throughout the years, like Dark Magician, you know, the Blue Eyes Dragon, Red Dra Red Eyes Black Dragon, Dark Magician Girl, you know, you name it. I even went as far as getting other cards I didn't think were possible to get because I didn't know if they existed or if they didn't. But over time, I noticed that, hey, yeah, these, these cards do exist. You know, these cards do exist. Like, like, for example, I'm looking at them right now. Like, Dark Magician Girl, the Dragon Knight. You know... Like, Dark Magic Twin Burst, or Bond Between Teacher and Student. You know, to, to see, you know, those uh, cards, you know, be, you know, actually be real, and to the point that you can utilize them, you know, in a tournament, or in a card game, um, I'm just adjusting something right now. But like I said, to see that you could use them in a card game, you know, at any time, I think is great. I really do. I mean, I mean, it just shows you the la the long-lasting legacy that Takahashi left behind or created and has left behind with the Yu-Gi-Oh franchise. It shows you how impactful it is to the point that fans like me, fans like my oldest nephew, fans like those I befriended when I was working at Burger King and other places like Walmart and Hastings and all that in Lawrence, Kansas back back in the 2000s, it shows you how much of an impact it had. It shows you how much of an impact it has. I mean, you go here on my channel and there's a video I did with my oldest nephew who is going to get married next year. His bride right now, his bride to be, is going to have a fit is having a fitting uh, event going on today, which would explain why I have the place to myself. Um, he's, she's going to have a fitting presentation going on today. You know, so my mom and my older sister, and my, my mom and my sisters, I should say, are over there in Sacramento to be part of that and meet with the family, or at least my older sister and my mom meet for the first time, my nephew's fiance's family. But the point is, the point is there is a video, and I'll probably link it at the end here, where he and I are playing Yu-Gi-Oh! We're playing the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's... You know, it is memories. It's memories to see how far, how long ago that was. But again, it shows you the impact it has when you find out that, you know, you're not the only one in your family that's a fan. And I have a poster that I have yet to hang back up of Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, stored away somewhere. You know, in, in the garage. But like I said, and like I said, it shows you that if I have that poster still, and I'm still collecting to this day, you know, it shows you the impact, you know, that this, you know, franchise has had. And we have to give thanks to Takahashi for bringing that impact, you know, to life with this series. We really do. I mean, I mean, if it wasn't for him coming up with the idea for the game and for the manga, I don't think any of us, you know, would have really gotten into Japanese anime and manga as much as we did. Yeah, we got into it thanks to things like Pokemon and Digimon and all that, but Yu-Gi-Oh! is right at that forefront when giving us a taste of how dark, you know, anime and manga stories can get, even if the presentation given to you on the West, you know, on the Western side of the world is supposed to be a little bit more lighter in tone, you see, you could definitely see, even with that attempt, that it was meant for a more older audience. So yeah, got to give thanks to the guy, and my prayers, my prayers and condolences go out to his family. Know that he's in a better place now, looking down from above, smiling, knowing that the legacy he left behind with this Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise, this card game, this manga franchise that he created 
is still going on strong even to this day. So, yeah, my, again, my prayers and condolences go out to his family. And guys, give me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts below. Super Chat Super Stickers will be enabled during this premiere of this video. What are your thoughts? Super Thanks also will be enabled as well. But let me know what your thoughts are in the live chat at, as well as below. Uh, your memories of Yu-Gi-Oh! How do you, you know, your memories of Takahashi bringing this franchise to life and into our, into our homes and into our lives. Let me know what your thoughts are. You know, again, support me at TikTok at BW Roses, at my Teespring store, at Venmo at Brian Warmer 2, at Cash App at BW Roses 98, at Patreon at BW Roses. And again, guys, let me know what your thoughts are. Like I said, live chat will also be available. Let me know what your thoughts are there. With super chat, super stickers also open and would be appreciated. And below in the comments, give me your thoughts, your memories on the Yu Gi Oh! franchise. I, as a fan, as we, again, you know, thank Mr. Takahashi for bringing this into our lives. And again, my prayers and condolences to his family. But let me know what your thoughts are, guys. And I am out.